What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of SmackDown, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including bad news for AJ Styles, legends confirmed for bad blood, The Fiend is back in WWE 2K24, are we getting a new Raw logo, a new champion crowned, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. As always, we won't recap the matches, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, a delightful dumpster match. If ever a wrestler needed to be thrown into a dumpster, it's Chelsea Green. Green is an ace when it comes to playing an entitled princess, so it's always fun to watch her get a comeuppance. Other than a hair versus hair match, it's hard to think of a better way to show this than a dumpster match. The match was good enough, but Green selling the After Effects was where she showed why she's one of the best at playing a character. Number 2. Ladder Match Main Event Over Delivers While fans might be disappointed to see DIY and the Street Profits job into the bloodline again, the three teams over delivered in the ring with a PLE quality ladder match, making for a jaw dropping main event. Number 3. AJ's Well Done Return Angle Was this a premature return for AJ Styles? Well, as we'll see in the news, that could be, but the WWE's return angle for the Phenomenal One worked much better than it should have. The idea of AJ just waltzing into the arena and saying, I love you guys and I'm back, while glossing over his recent run as a heel shouldn't have worked well. However, Styles and the WWE capitalized on AJ's absence from TV and his presence in front of the home fans. Number 4. Nia Stratton's storyline progressing nicely you can cut the tension with a knife. Well, as cliche as it may sound, the WWE has done a masterful job setting up Tiffany Stratton's inevitable Money in the Bank cash-in on Nia Jax, not only enticing fans with the question of when she'll cash it in, but how Nia Jax will react when she does. Number 5. Excellent build-up for Bad Blood Once again, the WWE showed that you can hype fans for a PLE and put on an entertaining show that also features wrestlers who won't be competing on the PLE. Now we know we're not alone in watching an entertaining show that doesn't seem like a two-hour hype video. Number 6. Slow build for Naomi Bailey working Does the WWE take things too slowly with storylines? Well, at times they do, as with the stalking storylines between Dexter Lumez and The Miz still standing out as one of the most exhausting angles with zero payoff. However, last night, the WWE reminded fans why it can be worth the wait, including the latest chapter in what seems to be Naomi turning heel on Bailey and maximizing time to showcase more superstars, even if it's cameos. The SmackDown was in the zone last night, with solid matches balanced by segments that featured some of the blue brand's other stars. Whether it was LA Knight sending a message to Carmelo Hayes with an impromptu BFT, or A Town Down Under reacting to Chelsea Green's dumpster-scented perfume, the WWE reminded fans that there's plenty going on behind the scenes, as well as in the ring. But that was a good, what about the bad, as number one, is there any hope for Mishin? At the risk of sounding snarky, we had to check the sound on the TV when Mishin entered the arena to make sure that it wasn't set on mute. Okay, that was a bit of an exaggeration, but there's no getting around the WWE Universe's muted response to a, a situation the WWE only has itself to blame for considering how poorly she's been used since her return. And number two, Bloodline dominance has to slow down. The Bloodline is destroying the WWE's undercard, as seen by Tamatonga and Tongaloa's win over the Street Profits and DIY in last night's main event. They did the same thing with Jay and Jimmy Uso, turning the Usos into the longest reigning tag team champions in WWE history and getting nothing out of it, such as putting the rub on the team that eventually defeated them. Sadly, it's unlikely anyone will get the rub from the bloodline this time around and it's hurting quality teams like the Profits and DIY. Now there was nothing downright ugly, it was an excellent show and a well booked build up for Saturday's PLE. Are you guys hyped for bad blood tonight? Do you see any big returns happening? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Our first story looks at bad news for AJ Styles. Atop of today's news is the apparent injury AJ Styles suffered on SmackDown during his match against Carmelo Hayes. Styles, who returned to TV for the first time since this year's Clash at the Castle PLE, appeared to hurt his leg during the match when his knee buckled during the match. The WWE's medical crew looked him over and Styles lost the match by forfeit as he limped back to the dressing room, with announcers informing fans Styles was being examined at the local hospital. I was unknown if the injury was worked or legit. Either way, we send our best to AJ and we'll keep you updated on the situation. Next up, Legends Confirmed for Bad Blood a Bad Blood is almost here. With the show taking place in Atlanta, Georgia, fans could see two legends show up. Arn Anderson, who coached Cody Rhodes in AEW and had the cameo at SummerSlam, tweeted, Heading to a very familiar surroundings for WWE Bad Blood tomorrow in Atlanta. Having Tully there should provide some serious flashbacks, and it'll be an honor to walk the halls of the fresh new WWE. To all my friends who still work there, see you tomorrow. 
Natalya and Arn enjoyed success in the WWF as the Brain Busters, including a run with the promotion's Tag Team Championship. However, they'll be forever known for their iconic tag team as part of the original lineup for the Four Horsemen. Next up, The Fiend is back in WWE 2K24. Now it's great news for Bray Wyatt fans as 2K24 recently tweeted that The Fiend Bray Wyatt is coming to the game on 16th October. Fightful noted, multiple versions of Bray Wyatt are already playable in 2K24 including an NWO version and a Saturday Night's Main Event version. What's particularly interesting about this version of The Fiend is that Bray Wyatt planned to introduce it when he returned to WWE and Jason Baker, the Hollywood horror wizard who worked with Bray on The Fiend Mask, tweeted, you can't kill it and all you can do is let him in. So honored to see Bray Wyatt final version of The Fiend coming to WWE games this month. There's no word yet on whether this version of The Fiend has to be unlocked or can be downloaded directly. Next up, a new Raw logo? Interesting news concerning Raw as Ringside News reported a logo is making the rounds online that may be the new look for Raw. Raw which plans to move to Netflix in January 2025 could get a big makeover much as NXT did when it moved to the CW. Ringside News posted a picture of the rumoured logo and commented on it saying, Fans have been buzzing about a new logo for WWE Raw that was recently spotted on new WWE toy sets showcasing the Netflix Raw branding. Do you guys think this is the new logo for Raw and if it is, what do you guys think about it? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Tonga seizes the day. Tonga Lo not only captured the WWE Tag Team titles from the top of a ladder on SmackDown, he also captured the fans' attention by taking the titles and the hanger that they were attached to. Whilst many people think that Tonga did botch the spot, this actually isn't anything new as John Cena and Randy Orton did this before. Still, fans were very impressed, particularly by Loa's incredible agility and balance as he stood up atop the ladder. Next up, good news for the Motor City Machine Guns. Now it looks like Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley won't be starting their WWE careers in NXT but moving straight to SmackDown. At least that's what the fans are theorizing after a hype video aired on SmackDown. PW Insider reports that a coming soon video aired that featured the city of Detroit aka the Motor City. Sportskeeda described a video that showed police car lights, two silhouettes of men walking and figures from Detroit City as well as the city itself. But did WWE spoil a big surprise? Or did SmackDown's Brazilian announced team spoil a major SmackDown surprise? Well that seems to be the case as viewers have posted a video on the broadcast and the name Motor City Machine Guns can be heard. Motor City Machine Gun. Next up, are fans bored with Carmelo Hayes? Has the WWE tired of Carmelo Hayes? Well that's a question after Hayes' promo with AJ Styles got a lukewarm if that reaction. Although Hayes' series with Andrade has been well received, it's unclear whether the universe is firmly behind him either as a heel or a face. The WWE fans chanted, you're not him, likely because they favoured Styles over Hayes. Nonetheless, some fans have just lost interest in Hayes who's been booked inconsistently since jumping to the main roster. Next up, a new champion crowned in WWE. A congratulations to Candice LeRae on becoming the inaugural WWE Women's Speed Champion. Candice, who hasn't held a title since winning the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship with Indy Hartwell, defeated EO Sky in the finals. Next up, Taz taking time off AEW. What's sad news for Taz fans as a human suplex machine won't be appearing in AEW for a bit. AEW wrote Taz off TV with a storyline where he was taken out in the parking lot by a mysterious assailant and now we know why. Taz tweeted, Unfortunately, I will be out for a while. I'll be having total knee replacement surgery very soon. Talk to you guys down the road. Like many wrestlers, Taz appears to be dealing with a toll of years spending taking bumps in and out of the ring. We send our best to Taz for a fast and full recovery. But there you have it folks, I will look at SmackDown as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.